In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you everything that you need to know about sound design. So I'm gonna show you how you can take your video from this to this. That's rule one, right? To do more than your best. So just a little background for you guys. I have six years of experience being a videographer slash video editor. Um, I've edited since the age of 10. Um, I'm 23 now, so I've picked up a couple of skills along the way, which I'd love to share with you today to help you improve your sound design. So if you're a beginner, you may be wondering why is sound design so important? Now, sound design is what can make or break a video. And the way I see it myself is when you edit a video, without the sound design, you've just got these visuals on a screen. When you add in that sound design, you're able to create a 3D visual for the audience to watch. And so the process of building your soundscape for me consists of around four steps. And to begin, you're gonna to wanna to find your music. And this is just the music track that you use, the backing track you use um, to your video. You're then gonna add in your diegetic and non-diegetic sounds. The way to think about diegetic and non-diegetic is the diegetic sounds are sounds that would naturally occur from the movement or whatever is happening in the video. So for example, when someone hits a golf ball, it makes a hitting sound effect. And that's a diegetic sound because it's a raw sound that happened within that video. So then a non-diegetic sound would be sounds that you've added in that don't actually belong in the video, but you've added in anyway. This could be a clock ticking. So then the final part of sound design for me is building that soundscape, which consists of two different segments. So you've got your risers, your whooshes and your hits. And then you've also got the atmospherics, like the drones and the low humming and so on. So let's get started with the process. Okay, so the first step in the process is finding the right music. Now, I use Artlist. Uh, and the reason why I use Artlist is because I found that out of all the different sites I've tried, I've tried a lot, they seem to just get it right in terms of getting those cinematic, you know, cinematic scores and cinematic tracks. I do a lot of commercial work as well and they just get it right. Feel free to shop around and, and sort of have a look at different sites that there are, but I've done the same as that and I came to the conclusion Artlist was just the best for me. It just worked for me. So once you're on the music tab, you're gonna head over to the genre section and you're gonna put in those keywords that you're looking for. Now for me, this was cinematic, ambient as well, I also wanted something a little bit electronic that was, it felt modern, it wasn't too slow and too somber, it had to have a little kick to it. I then headed over to the video theme tab and put in documentary. As you can see here, I came across a song called Moonrise, gave that a listen and it just clicked. So the next step in the process is to find your sound design. As you can see, they've um, split it up into segments for you to make it really easy. Um, so you've got different categories you can get, just go to. So the thing is, nine times out of 10, you're not gonna capture that diegetic sound within your camera. And if you do, it's not gonna be loud enough, it's not gonna be clean enough. So what you do is that sound that you're looking for, so for example, a golf hit, you then go and type it in to Artlist and you find it and then you can add effects to it and make it sound better. But the main part that I wanna talk to you about is building that soundscape using the hits, the risers, the wishes and all that kind of stuff. So to find these, you're gonna to go to the sound effects tab. Um, so you can go to the short wishes tab and you can find, you know, all of these um, sound, sound effects and you can download them. As you can see here, I've downloaded a lot of these ones. A really good sound effect to search for is a metallic hit. A metallic hit is a really good sound to get because you can reverb it, but more on that later. So once you've found your sounds, um, your hits and your wishes and all that kind of stuff, just download them and bring them into Premiere. So for example, here I've got a metallic riser and I've got an inhale. So you can you can see that pan out. And then this little sound effect here, which is a swoosh. I have a slow frames per second clip using that as a transition and I've used that swoosh to help make that transition feel smooth. If I took away that sound, that clip would not have as much effect as if I had it. But the point here is you wanna build up that sound design and you can layer all these swooshes and hits and rises and build them up and create tension within your clip. So I'll play you a couple so you can see how I've done it here. So for example, in this clip, I have a riser and then I have a hit. So you can see this pan out. That hit there. But then I've also got another whoosh there another swoosh there so you know it's all just building that tension again here 
I've got a swoosh and then I have a smaller swoosh here and then here I have another whoosh and then here I have a hit. So as you can see, you know, you have to build up your tracks and if it takes 16 layers, it takes 16 layers, but keep on adding in your, your swooshes and your hits. Don't overdo it, obviously. Add in what feels right to create that atmosphere and build it up. And obviously the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Um, and then the last thing that you can add in is drones, as I said, and atmospheres and, you know, drone sounds. So as you can see here, I have a low drone sound. So I'll just solo that. that's just playing underneath all the sound effects and building it up again. And drones are a really good way of creating tension, but in a subtle way, you don't want it to be too in their face. That's the process of getting all the sounds into the timeline. So now I'm gonna give you a couple of tips on what effects you can use to make your sounds really give it that cinematic feel. So as you can see, this sound here, I've added a low pass effect to. Again, I use this to help make a transition feel smooth. And basically what a low pass does is it makes it feel like it's underwater. It's that underwater effect. So head over to your effects tab, type in low pass, and um, all you do is bring over that low pass effect, drag it onto your clip. And then you see this little arrow here. Just click that arrow and then just bring your slider down and then just listen to it as you go and just get what feels right for you. For me, I had it at about 1,495 and that felt right. The next tip is adding surround reverb. So I add this effect onto pretty much all of my sound design. Um, it's an insane trick if you didn't know it already. If you look at all my, all my sounds here, you know, they pretty much all have um, surround reverb on them. Again, just head over to your effects tab, type in surround reverb um, and then just drag it over. And then what you wanna do once you're on here, I already have the effect on, so I'll show you what I've got. But you're gonna add it on, go to edit, and then down here you've got a basically a whole bank of presets and just choose what feels right for you. I experiment with Lost in Space, In the Church, Hank the Tank, and they work really well for me, but obviously they're all really cool. Um, I've got Hank the Tank here. Um, you can play around with all these effects and stuff. Um, but for me, this worked really well. And then I'll show you what it sounded like. The, the effect is called a metallic snippet. Now that's what I mean about these effects is you, you've got to search for textures and stuff. This is without the surround reverb and this is with it. So it's a very subtle difference. So another example is I've sampled over a voiceover in this video because it's a sport video. I wanted to make it motivational. And for me, my style is sort of evoking emotion within my videos. So this is the voiceover without the reverb. Okay, then I add in the reverb and listen to the difference in this. That's rule one, right? You do more than your best because your best isn't enough. So just, it just adds in a bit of an echo. It makes it reverby and it makes it sound more cinematic. So that's a really cool tool if you didn't know about it. So not many people know about this, but there's a little tool in Premiere Pro called the Rate Stretch Tool. And this allows you to stretch or shorten clips to change the length, the duration of the clip. And this can be really useful if you have a bunch of swooshes and whooshes and hits, etc. And you really like the sound of it, but you want to prolong it and you want to change it up because you can't have the same sound design and all your transitions because it, it would get boring for the audience. By using the rate stretch tool, you can stretch a sound effect to make it sound like it's a different sound effect, but you're still using the same one. So this clip here, this is a swoosh, and this is how it sounds without the rate stretch tool. But if I stretched it, it would sound like this. This basically just allows you to unlock so many doors when you're coming to video editing because you can just manipulate sound design how you want it and really get the exact sound that you need to bring your visuals to life. So the final thing that you need to do before exporting is to watch your video back and make sure nothing is clipping. I like to maintain my video around sort of between minus six and minus three. Make sure nothing is hitting zero because it will then be clipping and this will sound horrible. The way to do this is just to watch your mixer at the side. So you'll know if it's clipping because it will hit it will hit the line at the top and it will go red. Another way to do this as well is just go into your mix button down here and bring in the whole production sound down a couple and this can help you 
you know, control the sound that it's going to put out. And that is how I curate my soundscape for my videos. So I hope you've taken something away from this video and that you take the sort of process and implement it when you're editing your next video and you can sort of go through the motions and build that soundscape because I promise you it makes all the difference. If you have any other questions surrounding around sound design or anything similar to do with filmmaking, then make sure you put them in the comments below um, and I'll try and make a video on it for you. And yeah, you can expect a lot more filmmaking, tutorials, all that kind of stuff on this channel. Um, so I guess I'll see you in the next one. Peace.